Okay, here's the expansion. Um, forgive my V boxes, but um, so as you, this right here, as you, as you can probably tell, this right here is my water reservoir. I've got a lot of pipes and, and uh, hoses in there right now. That's because I use a lot of these hoses to top fill and, and back fill and all kinds of stuff. And we're in the middle of the winter and I'm in Washington State. So winter in Washington State equals freezing temperatures. If I leave these hoses outside, they end up be freezing, brittle, breaking. It's kind of a mess. So I'm going to have to use these often. So I put it in here just to, uh, you know, make sure that it doesn't freeze over. Um, anyways, so this is my, this is the... The reserve tank. These two 330 gallon tanks are uh, fish tanks. I have netting over them because they, these fish are now of the age where they, they're starting to jump. Unfortunately because it's really cloudy outside and there's just not a whole lot of light coming in and the glare of everything you clearly can't see into it. But in addition to all those things I just said, I'm having an issue with water clarity. And that is why I've had to do a lot of work over the past two days, uh, day and a half really, Saturday and, and the latter part of Friday, um, trying to get water flush and, and figured out. Um, I bought this uh, little air, air pump here. It, it pumps a lot more air. As you can see there, it really gets the dissolved oxygen inside the water. I have one of those going in each one of these. This tank right here is no longer the sump tank. It is the... Um, uh, it is the moving bed biofilter, and uh, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but definitely have some beneficial bacteria that is colonized into into this water here. Um, the water is too cold right now um, because of my water flushes. Uh, the water temperature, unfortunately, is 58 and 58 degrees, and that is not good. Uh, I had it at 64 yesterday which is still not great, uh, but 58 degrees is really not good. So I've got to figure out a way to make sure that I'm getting that uh, temperature up to the 66, 67, 70-ish range would be preferable. Number one issue is I have a doggy door in this garage and that doggy door lets in a lot of cold air. So I've got to find a way to, I mean this garage is fully insulated, but I need to find a way to maintain the heat in here. There's a lot of thermal mass in water and so it's tough to uh, change the temperature too quickly. But with all the water um, flushes I've been doing, it uh, the water temperature has fallen. Okay, so the fish are doing really well. As you can see, the water is pretty murky right now. And so you might not even be able to see the fish, which is unfortunate. There's about 30 of them. I'm just I'm looking around with you here to try to find one tank that is a little more clear. Oh man, they're all pretty murky right now. I promise you that four days ago, four days ago, this was crystal, not crystal clear, but it was very clear and you could see all the fish. Here's the two nursery tanks. I've got a water flow. Uh, typically I like to see the top part of the pipe that tells me that the water's flowing uh, correctly. But for some reason, this one right here must have something clogged in it. I don't, I don't know. I need to look into that further. But here is the the new pump that I got. It's working really well. Uh, the water, all of the water you see on the ground is just me messing around and stuff like that. I don't have any leaks in the system. But here is a great pump right here into a sand filter. The sand filter is full of um, gravel and clay pebbles. I didn't want to put sand in it because with all this fish it would clog up in, uh, very quickly. So I had to do two flushes of this thing. I've had this thing running for uh, four months or so. So so it's uh, three months maybe, somewhere in there. Um, so this thing has been working really well. Now, so this is what happens is this, the moving bed biofilter has a large pipe that goes down the center of it and it has hundreds and hundreds of slits cut into it and it expands the length or the the, the whole diameter of this uh, tank right here. So the water the water flows into it, flows down here, drops in and gets pumped out. Um, so the water pumps through here, boom. I made this equal height on each one of these outlets so that the water has to flow in, flow up uniformly, and then pushes water, uh, hopefully in an even fashion out. 
I have these these right here um, semi closed, and I'll show, explain that in a second. But so the water flows, and this normal the, the system right here is is uh, working just as it always has. Um, see my other videos to explain how that works. But to focus on this, the reason why I have I, I see a lot of people when they have these totes, they take the water from the bottom. It is a natural. Uh, valve down below both of those and, and just, they did take that so that it's a steady flow into it. The reason why I have solid lifting outlets that is the only uh, avenue through which water exits is because it's a risk mitigation factor. Like, okay, I don't want to flood my entire house and garage if something breaks. Okay, so for instance, let's say this fitting right here just boom blows up. Okay, and I'm not around. The amount of water that would escape into my garage and house, etc., would be the equivalent of these two tanks and this tank if I were to connect it down below. Okay, but and that's just what that's just horrible. That's a horrible mess, is what that is. I mean, that is literally uh, 1,400. 1500 gallons of water everywhere. Okay, that's just a horrible deal. So what I did is I decided to do a solid lifting outlet Which means that as the, the elevation of this water increases then it spills over that pipe And then it sucks all the solids in, and it gets trapped here and it gets trapped there um, Anyways, so by having a solid lifting outlet right here once this thing blows this the, the height of this water will go down, boom, it'll hit that pipe, and then start sucking air. Once it starts sucking air, the water flow stops, and after a while, this thing trips off, okay? So the only water issues that I could have is the equivalent of that much water, roughly 40 gallons of water, okay? So that's actually why I did that, okay? It works really well. I know a lot of people have had issues with a square tank having a solids lifting outlet in one corner. You might have a pocket where solids settle in the corner. But if you have enough fish in your tank, they seem to move it really well and that solids over time migrates over here. I'm just so bummed that the water clarity is so poor right now so you can't see it. Four days ago it was really, really clear. Um, and I just have had to do all this work and so it's kicked up a lot of solids and things. A um, little tabletop there for my air pump. Um, the reason why I have these hoses here is because I was doing maintenance. What I do with these hoses is when I'm ready, I turn off the pump first. I switch this over to rinse or flush. Okay. I unscrew that. I screw on this pipe here. I connect it into that tank. This tank now, for easy, easy water flushes and cleaning, this tank has an exit valve on the very, very bottom. And all I do is I take this brush, I stick it down into the bottom. It's, you know, you can see the clear white bottom right now. It's typically caked with feces, but when, when I'm ready to flush it, I stick that down there, I whoosh it around, it kicks up all the solids, and, you know, pretty vigorously. And then I go and I turn that on, boom. And in a one and a half, two inch line, it goes one and a half to two inch, but it flushes that real fast, gets rid of all of the wastewater. I put it into the yard and the garden, etc. And then uh, once that's done, I turn it off, and then I use the this tank to fill this back up. Okay, and then once it's good, I turn on the pump, and it keeps going. So that's uh, I wanted to make this. You know, number one goal was to learn how to do this. Number two, use recycled materials. Number three, make it easy because I don't want to spend a bunch of time doing this. Now, I, this is an experiment. I, I told you in previous videos, I've told my wife as well, I'm not going to do the growing side of this yet. But I, I just started a, a few seeds in here, just threw some seeds. And this thing has been going now for a number of months. And <laughs> it's just, and, I mean, they look really bad, of course, because I'm just not taking care of them. But they grew really fast and there they are. And uh, I, I'm going to put them in all of these little cups and get a grow light and see how it works. What am I missing? I've hooked up electrical. I've uh, 
the netting is, is because these fish are now old enough that I've noticed that at nighttime, if I accidentally leave the lights on in the garage, they get really active and they jump up and down, up and down. So I put a netting on this one because these two were the only two tanks I was having troubles with. These fish, they were jumping, but for some reason they were jumping underneath this and they would jump up and hit the top of it and fall back in. So I know that that's not a very good... I just haven't had any fish lost whatsoever in these tanks, so I'm just going to go until something happens and then I get to change my mind. So that's the update, the update on the um, system. Let me show you some of the issues that I had with these two media tanks right now. Um, in, in a previous video I, I took as I was cleaning those things out. 